you could actually measure the frequency of the Earth getting higher and higher. So Earth is evolving, and Earth wants us to match the vibration, or we're going to get very sick, and we will not be a hindrance to Earth anymore because we won't be here. Yeah. Earth is going to survive, but the species may not survive. Just as we have eliminated many species through polluting uh, the planet, we may kill ourselves. So I would advise people, you know, to go in, become entrained to that heartbeat of the earth through your prayer, your meditation, your right nutrition, right exercise, and lift your consciousness. Because earth is going to be okay, but the species may not. Hi YouTube, hi class. My name is Sheila J, and this is my final presentation for Eco Psychology. Now, before you click off this video, I want you to ask yourself, what are you pretending not to know? We have heard the phrase, everyone is you pushed out, so much that basically it has become a toxic phrase, a remedy, if you will, to victim blame people. But I believe that the one thing that's forgotten in its entirety is that we are also not separate from Earth. Eco-psychology studies the relationship between human beings and the natural environment through both ecological and psychological principles. The Earth reflects back to us who we are as we reflect back to Earth what Earth is. Earth and human beings were made from the same source, so how can we treat it the way in which we do? And that's what this video is going to be about, because the relationship between self and world is reciprocal. It is not a question of first getting enlightenment and then acting. As we work to heal the earth, the earth heals us. I find this to especially be true with everything that's going on in the world because there's chaos, victim blaming, and not enough people holding themselves accountable for their actions. Everyone as you pushed out is a thing and nothing is separate from us, but we are so fixated on external factors that we are forgetting that it's not just about manifesting people and material things like money, cars, and houses. It's also about our relationship with the world as well. I feel that's the missing piece that we need to understand to start a collective shift and help the world heal as well as heal ourselves we know that we are mirrors to the external world, to each other, and it's with my understanding that we are not separate from each other, but instead a collective consciousness. And with this said, I believe that we are in turn not separate from the earth as well, because the unconscious is not just a reactive mirror reflection, but an independent productive activity. Its realm of experience is a self-contained world having its own reality of which we can only say that it affects us as we affect it. Precisely what we say about our experience of the outer world. If we begin to look at the world as feedback through a lens of love, we can then make the internal shifts to perpetuate healing between each other and the earth. The earth is literally giving us feedback of what we need to work on. However, some of us choose to ignore it and because we choose to ignore what we need to work on, it continues to create chaos and work against us instead of earth and us working with each other. The opposite of destruction is creation. If we use our imagination for creating a more sustainable life on earth, then we will give destruction less power over us. It is scientifically proven that whatever we believe, think, and feel about ourselves manifests into our outer world. So if we harness that power for the greater good of humanity, we will all start to see a difference in the world in which we all create for everything on this planet is literally a manifestation, but it can be a manifestation of good or a manifestation of evil. We need to have a balance because without a balance of light and dark, good and bad, ego and higher self, we will lose ourselves and become too much of something. And instead of integrating with our entire being, we create chaos in ourselves and the world because we hide parts of ourselves that want to be seen but can't be seen because sometimes we choose to hide. We are not separate from each other. 
And if we are not separate from each other, we are also not separate from the earth. So why do we think we are that way? We think this way because we are taught that things are outside of us, even though it's the complete opposite of that. Because it is a mirror. It's like an invisible mirror because we see it first in our minds before we see it in the physical world. But society teaches us that it starts in the physical world before we understand it mentally. Through this mentality, it creates fear and scarcity in this individual way of thinking instead of the collective consciousness way of thinking. I believe that what the previous quote is saying is that we start at birth knowing that we have an abundant right for love and knowing we're going to get the things we need and want. It's only through what we have begun to learn and adapted through society's teachings that we begin to adapt the scarcity and lack mindset. And to shift out of this mindset, we need to start teaching new stories about love, joy, and peace. To do this, we'll start with changing our school systems and having children connect with earth and nature by the time they are school aged. A perfect example of what this would look like is Maria Montessori's educational method. The Maria Montessori theory is an educational approach that emphasizes individualized instruction and self-paced learning. It's based on the belief that children are naturally curious and capable of learning independently. Maria Montessori developed the Montessori method because she believed that education should be tailored to each child's unique needs and interests. Creating an environment for kids to explore and learn on their own also helps us to create new ways of being since everything that we have learned and are taught is ingrained in us since birth. And so generations after generations, we learn ways of being that do not serve us or our entire society as a whole. Because of people's wounded childhood feelings, attitudes, values, and experiences of nature and of their bodies sometimes are among the root causes of their overall sense of alienation. Therefore, when left unhealed, it can cause this generational trauma. If we begin to change the narrative from childhood to adulthood, then I believe that we can truly start to heal and help one another from a place of love and respect. Not only do we heal ourselves, but we heal our children and our children's children. While we need to heal ourselves, nature can also help heal us as well. By doing this, this will create a sense of oneness with ourselves and the earth. One is hardly conscious of the extent to which nature acts not only as a driving force, but as a helper. In other words, how much instinct insists that the higher level of consciousness be attained. This urge to a higher and more comprehensive consciousness fosters civilization and culture, but must fall short of the goal unless man voluntarily places himself in its service. Basic hypothesis is set forth is that humankind is suffering from a failed attempt to solve the problem of our world because of a seriously outdated self-understanding or consciousness. If more people understood that our problems on earth are not separate from each other, we can begin to reshape our entire existence. Instead of thinking selfishly, we should think selflessly and in a childlike viewpoint because our children always want to be curious and love at their core. My dad said schools are basically prisons. They keep kids locked up physically and mentally, prepare them for jobs that are also basically prisons until they retire and go to a nursing home, their final prison. School is not a prison. Can I leave whenever I want to? It's a little like a prison. If children had access to being in nature more instead of being in a school all day, it would help them to be able to feel safe with themselves and their creativity so that it helps to regulate their emotions better. The more we integrate children in the idea of interconnectedness, the more we will help each other, ourselves, and the world around us.
We don't change ourselves precisely because we have only ourselves with which to do the changing, but we continually influence and are influenced by the world around us and the world within us. It may seem paradoxical to hold people responsible for what happens in their corner of the universe, but once we break the spell of free will, we can do this precisely to the degree that it is useful. Where people can change, we can demand that they do so. Where change is impossible or unresponsive to bans, we can chart some other course. In improving ourselves and society, we are working directly with the forces of nature, for there is nothing but nature itself to work with. Before we begin our meditation exercise, I want you to close your eyes and breathe in for a count of three. One, inhale, then exhale. Two, inhale, then exhale. Three, inhale, then exhale, and stay there with your eyes closed. In your imagination, Form an action picture of yourself as an astronaut, walking in your marvelous spacesuit down the ladder of the landing craft to the moon's surface. Now, for the next few minutes, be the astronaut on the moon. Explore your surroundings, staying in touch with all your feelings. Now look across the lunar horizon and see your planet home for the first time. From this vantage point, be aware of your feelings as you look at our small, gray, green, living planet in the vast, cold, dark immensity of space. See it as home, your only home, and the only home of everyone you love, and the one home of the whole human family as well as all the living creatures who together breathe its air and share its resources and miraculous aliveness. Keep glancing towards Earth occasionally as you explore further around the landing craft. Now climb the ladder back into the landing craft. Lock the air hatch and blast off for home. You are now speeding through space from the sterile lunar environment and toward the one living planet of the sun. As you look back and ahead, stay in touch with your feelings and thoughts. Try thinking about your personal problems from the perspective of what you just experienced. Now reflect on the huge problems of your world from this perspective, including the global environmental crisis threatening the planet's precious biosphere. Stay with the flow of your images and feelings for a few minutes, discovering where they take you. See if you can get in touch in a fresh way with the reality you have long known that is truly is one world or none. Be aware that this is the most holistic perspective from which to work for wellness. When you are ready, open your eyes and jot down what seems important to remember from your experience. Be particularly aware of anything you now are aware that you need to do as a result of what you have experienced. Discuss your experience with a family member or a friend and then plan whatever action is appropriate to implement what you've decided. 